Have you ever needed to edit a config file but don't really like using the CLI and are not familiar with Linux commands? What you need is VS Code or Coder, which is basically VS Code just running on the server. By installing this, you get a beautiful web GUI, which allows you to edit YAML files, configuration files, which you usually have to do through the command line, but now you can do it in your web browser and it saves automatically, allowing you to bypass the command line almost completely. Now let's get started deploying VS Code or Coder on TrueNAS and on Dockage. Starting on TrueNAS, click your Apps tab, and on the top right, click the blue Discover Apps button. Search for Coder, and click the Result for Code Server. Click the blue Install button. Scroll down, we have to add an additional environment variable here. Click the Add button. For name, type Password and then go ahead and give it a password. Scroll down all the way until you get to the storage configuration section and find the last part where it says code server project storage. We wanna change that to host path and then pick the name of your pool here. In this case, mine is just mount tank. Scroll all the way to the bottom and hit install. In the event you wanna persist the local storage or the server config storage, you can go ahead and create host paths for that, but it's really not necessary because VS Code is mainly editing code that already exists somewhere else on the server. The actual configuration of VS Code in the web browser is not important and does not need to be saved. To deploy Coder in Dockage, go ahead and jump over to the wiki. In the search box, type code server and click the result. Click the second tab under Deploy Code Server for Docker Compose and copy the entire Compose file. Jump over to the Dockage web UI, click the plus Compose button in the top left corner, and give your stack a name. Replace all the placeholder information on the right with the Docker Compose file you just copied. Again, I'm not persisting the volumes because the configuration for the VS Code in the server doesn't really matter. The only thing that matters is that I pass my mount tank pull through so I can edit the files there. Go ahead and click Deploy. Once it's running, go ahead and click 8443 to launch the web UI. You'll get a little pop-up box asking you if you trust the authors. You can go ahead and click the box for trust the authors of all the files in the parent folder and click the blue button to say, yes, I trust the authors. And in the bottom right, click the I understand button. On the left side, we now have the overview of all the folders within VS Code. The one that's gonna be most interest to you is the project folder. Here we see everything in my mount tank pool. Within all of these are the configuration files for everything I've deployed. If I wanted to edit my stacks directory without going through the dockage interface, I can do that here. As an example, I'll open my R stack, and you can see here, this is my compose YAML for all of my R containers. And here's the .env file that holds my media path. So if I expand my configs folder here and expand the qubit, we can see here, this is my WireGuard folder where the WireGuard file has to go for my VPN. To insert something like that without having to go through the command line, I can simply right click this, add a new file, and here I can give it a name, wg0, dot conf and hit enter. Now I'm greeted with a nice web UI where I can insert my WireGuard VPN key. I'm just gonna type insert VPN key here and hit control S to save. Now to show you guys that this has worked, I'm gonna jump back to TrueNAS, go into my shell, and I'm gonna navigate to that file that I just added for my wg0.conf. Here we can see my wg0.conf file. When I show you what's inside, we can see here that it says insert VPN key here. It's a little messy because it's in the shell, but that's exactly why code server is so great. This is so much more clear to me than something in the shell, and I didn't have to know any Linux commands to be able to do this. I can simply right click and start a new file, or right click and go ahead and delete this file. Be aware this is very powerful. You may be able to make changes here that are able to break things, so just make sure you know what you're doing before you go ahead and make changes to these files. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you like the idea of editing your code and your files in something like VS Code versus in the command line, let me know below in the comments and why you think this is a better way to do it. If you like this video, make sure to give us a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to the channel to get all the latest updates on the videos that we release. In the event you want to see a video, make sure you're on our Discord server so you can vote on the weekends for the videos that get released on Wednesdays. If you want to have a longer conversation about how this works or about maybe editing code in the background through something like VS Code, make sure you're on the Discord server because that's where we like to have longer conversations. Thank you all for watching this video, and as always, stay curious.